All right, we are back. This is exciting. We have the one, the only Sean Gordon Murphy here with us today. Welcome, sir. How are you? Man, I'm so excited. I wanted to connect with you at San Diego, but we didn't quite make it happen. Uh, I know. I, I apologize. Yeah. No, no, no. It's probably my fault. It's funny because I just got back from Toy Fair and it's utter madness when you go. You have a, a set plan. You can detail it all you want and you step in those doors and it, it goes to hell. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think the best approach to any of those things is patience, trying to get rest, you know, careful on how much you drink, try not yeah. to, you know, get to uh, you know, much anxiety manage your anxiety, you know. Right. <laughs> try to be kind, you know, and don't take it personally if someone uh flubs up and doesn't make it on time, you know. I mean, like I said, I'm glad we were able to connect this way because um we have a lot to discuss. I mean, obviously, I didn't know you were a Zorro fan. That's great. I am a Zorro fan, and this is funny because, and I'll be honest with you, I like the the idea of Zorro. I can't say I'm all into the the comic side. I know all about the character uh, yeah. at, at this late in the game, but really took off with Zorro with obviously the Antonio Banderas movies, mm -hmm. uh, which yeah. does change a lot about the character. But yeah, at least the the first one was was very cool to watch. But uh, on my yeah. trip to Toy Fair. Uh, oddly enough knowing that we were going to be talking about you know your upcoming kickstarter for zorro which is equally yeah. exciting so we'll get to that in just a few but yeah yeah they had the movies on the flight you could watch so i brushed up on my zorro uh yeah <laughs> nice nice <laughs> not so yeah, much you know the second one you know <laughs> yeah it's funny here yeah, i think people generally agree the first one was pretty good like yeah. a solid seven or eight out of ten you know and yeah. uh, it was a lot of fun it's funny i was trying to watch all the old movies to do research and trying to pick my favorite one and um you know the black and white disney one is pretty high up there as well as um i'm getting them all mixed up there's there's so many zorro things out there there's like 30 movies in italy that were made and released that we don't even know about here yeah um zorro with pistols zorro driving a car like 1920s style it's it's and all over the place, honestly. Yeah, and, and to me, it's it's kind of fitting because you've come from Batman, Batman, Curse of the White Knight, all the White Knight series, and now to do Zorro. Uh, when I heard that you were doing that, I felt, oh, what a what a natural progression into a sort of Batman ish character, but a completely yeah. uh, unique uh, individual in and of himself. I was it's to me. I've been saying this a lot lately. It's it's like the OG Batman. Uh, yeah. Depending on DC's timeline, I don't know what official continuity is, but Bruce's parents were killed after they saw the Mask of Zorro in the theater. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, it's funny. It was harder to draw the character than I thought at first because I'm <laughs> I've been drawing Batman, which is black on black. You think it would be easy to just give him a sword and a hat, you know? But uh, looking at the old Toth stuff, um, it was a lot trickier than I realized. But by the end of issue one, I was able to to reel it in and uh, make it work. Yeah, and, and in reading your your Batman White Knight series, for me, uh, growing up with comics, late 80s in throughout the 90s, Batman animated series, you see all that peppered in there. And yeah. as one would assume, you're a huge fan, I'm sure, is uh, of all those um, different iterations. But what... Uh, what would is or what would be your ideal Zorro if you are you kind of mixing and matching or kind of doing your own take this time around or yeah I mean my version is um uh didn't know if you wanted to talk about Batman first or Zorro so we can do whichever I think we'll I think we'll uh, just uh, we'll have a natural conversation we'll see what happens right Maybe that works keep, that uh, works keep the audience at home uh, on their toes yeah my version is um when I went after the uh the IP which I've never licensed anything before people were really incredulous like why would you do this what you have a batman universe and um you know as far as they're concerned zorro is published by dynamite or american mythology and it um, and i like those guys but the numbers just aren't that aren't that high you know mm -hmm. and i thought well there's i think there's a way to reinvent the character highlight it in a way that i think is is that i think i can do something with it that no one else is doing i think by using kickstarter to make these like special products like 11 by 17 artist editions and hardcovers. It's high end stuff that a lot of shops won't carry because of shelf space. Mm -hmm. um, what I, when I, uh, to answer your question, when I started coming up with the idea, I was like, man, I want to do a Western. I love Zora. I love swashbuckling. But um, I kind of want to draw a car too because I'm the, the, the car guy in comics. 
Um, so I'm like, well, what kind of car would Zorro drive if he was, a, if this was a modern day story. And I came up with the El Camino from like the late sixties. Yeah. And in my head, I'm like, wait a minute. What if Zorro is in the back of an El Camino dressed as Zorro? Uh, and he's crazy and is out of his mind. Like he doesn't know what year it is. And his sister is <laughs> driving the car. Like, how do I get to that image? As silly as that is, I just found that really exciting. So th for me, the trick was like, well, how do I write a plot around this? And I came up with like Narcos meets Don Quixote. So oh, okay. it's a modern day story. And there's this kid whose father's killed in front of him, kind of like Batman. And uh, he's whisked away into this castillo uh, near this village in Mexico, the uh, village of La Vega, which is the historical um, home of Zorro. Mm -hmm. Everyone in this village is convinced that Zorro was a real person 200 years ago. And, um, you know, it's great for tourism and stuff. Um, but the uh, drug dealers are everywhere. They're growing. The whole town is converted to growing crops for, for drugs, basically. And 20 years go by, and this kid actually ends up training with his surrogate father up in the castle, learning all about Zorro, like sword fighting, gymnastics, horse riding. And when he's killed, this kid has really bad luck. <laughs> um he has a psychotic break and he's convinced that he's Zorro. So he puts on the Zorro suit and he starts murdering drug dealers. And what starts out as a joke turns into a real problem because this kid's really good at it. The villagers who are very oppressed are very supportive of the idea and very like sensational. And they sort of, he's sort of able to lead a rebellion against the bad guys in the city by being Zorro. And it's not clear if this kid even understands what year it is. He doesn't understand why muskets can fire so quickly, you know? Yeah. Uh, he doesn't know what a car is. Uh, so it was kind of a fun way to do classic swashbuckle-y, over-the-top Arrow Flynn Zorro, but also ground it in something more modern, you know? Yeah. And um, the whole thing takes place on Halloween or Day of the Dead in, in Mexico. So I, I thought of a cool way to make it kind of like a holiday book. I so like that. That's the long yeah. question. I mean, especially since, uh, what, we have finally we're into October. Everyone can officially celebrate Halloween. A lot of people went right. with September. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I, people who think Halloween is technically like September, whenever summer's over, right. when Halloween begins and it goes until the day before Thanksgiving. Yeah, ex exactly. Right. Poor Thanksgiving <laughs> doesn't get anything anymore. It's, and that's, no. that's one of the best holidays. Uh, if we're being honest, all that good food. Come on. You can't. Yeah, can't that that's up. true. It <laughs> was until the culture war. And now we like fight with each other over Trump. Right. <laughs> but, but yeah, I like Thanksgiving a lot, too. The the book itself, and I, I got to tell you, I kind of like that spin, the way you described it, because I was wondering, every iteration we always see, it's always usually set uh, way back in the past or, you know, during <laughs> the, the formation of California. Uh, the, yeah. the years kind of, uh, they go either way, right? It's kind of yeah. like 1821, 48, something like that. But uh, no, that's kind of an interesting take, I have to say, because Zorro if we're being honest, it needs a, a bit of a sprucing up, a little bit of a, mm. a change up, especially with a modern yeah. society and everything. Who knows if it'll be taken certain ways and whatnot. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a, it, it just sounds very interesting. And Thanks, man. the fact that, uh, I mean, it's, it's your artwork, which I've seen some of the promo yeah. images. You were nice enough to share them. And I like that uh, Dia de los Muertos kind of artwork spliced in with Zora. I think that's very yeah. fitting. Something Thanks, of a, a very different take, you know. So I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. The we we I put this campaign out a couple of years ago for a book called Plot Holes. Yeah, and I feel like with Zorro, we're sort of dialing everything up to eleven. Um, so this time around, we've got variant covers by I don't know if your listeners will know, like Humberto Ramos or Adam Hughes. Sure. Um, yeah. these big like pinup artists, and I was able to basically force my friends to uh, give me stuff for free <laughs> or trade. There you go. Uh, to help push the book. I'm just kidding. I actually, I paid most of them. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, um, you know, it's all about yeah. the networking, you know, it's, it's, exactly. Yeah. Do me a favor, do you favor, you know? So yeah, these lazy bastards, they can give me a quick Zorro, you know, yeah. what's, what's the big deal? He's all, all black. We all know at home. Artists only take like what? Five, 10 minutes to do a cover. Come on. I mean, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing that broke me. It was chasing down set with these covers. And I started to realize like, this is why editors lose their minds. Where are these artists? What happens right? when they just disappear? <laughs> <laughs> you start giving them fake deadlines just because you don't trust that they'll deliver. And uh, yeah, it's, it's wild. Yeah. It, it, you know, I've got to ask you at some point, do you think we'll ever see, uh, or is this set kind of sort of in your whole Murphy verse ensemble? Is this uh 
anything that oh, would lead to a, a team up, perhaps between a Dark Knight and a and a and a, and a Zorro. I was actually thinking about pitching DC Zorro White Knight and doing a quick two issue story where um, my Bruce meets Zorro, but it's in a like maybe after his parents are killed, the kid Bruce runs back into the theater, mm -hmm. he runs by the poster of Zorro, and it like comes to life, and somehow Zorro becomes real to young Bruce as he's going through this traumatic event. Um, it's all I have so far, but I don't like licensing wise that would be tricky. Yeah. It's not else. It's not like a DC spinoff book. It's attached to my universe. So like, I don't know what the lawyers would make of that idea. But right. in spirit, I'm with you 100%. <laughs> Going to Toy Fair, being my third one now, and in, in talking a lot to uh, the various companies and toy makers and whatnot, it's very interesting to understand licensing. And a lot of people will say within the action figure community, they'll talk about how yeah. like, Oh, I wish they would do this or what's stopping them from doing this. And yeah. to be honest, the short answer of everything is always like, couldn't get the yeah. rights or it's yeah. just licensing. It's messy. It's red tape. So, so you're actually, we're more of an expert in this. So maybe you can answer this question for me. Oh, let's hope. Um, I don't want to embarrass myself, but let's go. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm a big Blade Runner fan. Like, oh, like okay. a lot of people are. I've been dying and waiting for a 118 diecast scale Blade Runner spinner car. Sure. And it kills me that it's not out there. And when the new movie came out, I was like, finally, we'll put out the new spinner car, which they yeah. did. And then they'll release the original, but they haven't. And I don't understand why, because I have a Hallmark Christmas ornament of the spinner. It's plastic. So they're <laughs> granting licenses there. Yeah. And then you've got like, you, you're telling me that, um, what's that movie? The Green Hornet, the stupid black Green Hornet car gets the A118 scale, but not the spinner. Like, what is going on? And I tried to look into it a little bit. The best I could figure was um, Blade Runner is owned by a cabal of people that can't agree on what to do with it. And sure. so it's a licensing problem, as, as you'd say. I would say yes to all of that. Yeah, I'd imagine, you know, I, I know that when the, the newest Blade Runner came out and NECA Toys tackled some of the, the characters from that movie, um, yep. like Deckard, and then um, you had Ryan Gosling's character. And I think it most of the time boils down to it's the modern day movie to product tie in sort of, well, mm -hmm. the movie didn't do well. And if the movie doesn't do well, then toys don't do well and nobody has interest. So next, what do we got? You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I feel like it's always so dependent on if a movie yeah. or a cartoon or something does so well, that's how they mm -hmm. judge if, oh, yeah. is there any interest out there in the public? Whereas yeah. you're absolutely right. I know several friends that would love to have uh, yeah. more, more takes, more figures on the Blade Runner franchise. But uh, yeah. I have heard similar things like that, where they want to go one way. They don't know if it'll sell. They, 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 they want yeah. too much product. They don't want enough product. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, they, the, the spinner they released for the movie was terrible. It had a sticker <laughs> of the window on the window it was clearly slapped together i still bought it but i'm like why not if you can do this why not do the original spinner as well like it just yeah. blows my mind especially you know i get that a lot of blade runner people might not be action figure people but they're you're really into this cult following and i think that a high-end xm studio statue or some other stuff would would sell like low volume higher priced items it yeah cult, it, you know. especially in the more you know you could say like a hot toys realm or yeah so much more detailed but at the higher price point i think that you would definitely yeah. find an audience there uh yeah. blade runner being such a poignant movie in so many especially right. now you know growing up and, and thinking back on that movie i mean to do action figures and have you know, the likeness yeah. rights it's just yeah something's going on hopefully one not, day it's not being handled correctly right it's funny though you said that you go oh you know the, the sticker it's not very good i still bought it and i think a lot of us out there will agree it's like we will say all day like ah, it's, it's it's halfway there you know it's kind of there we bought it anyways because there's that's nothing it else. there's nothing you know in yeah. the way of so any little there, any little crumb sprinkle you know? <laughs> yeah there was a, a a kickstarter i think it was crowdfunding for the uk show the prisoner and yeah. there's a ton of prisoner hardcore fans that have nothing to spend money on because there's nothing prisoner related, no merch, no records, no shirts, you know, it's just, 
So they did a campaign and it got funded through the roof. Um, they put out like just little, um, you know, action figures for that series. And people who don't even care about toys are like, they bought it because they've been dying to spend their money on something, anything yeah. related to the prisoner, you know? Yeah. I thought that was fascinating. No, uh, actually, you know, my uh, a friend of mine, Gavin Hignight, he and um, Doc, they uh, did the Kickstarter for that and then got it all that going and they uh, unveiled oh, okay. the new figure wow. at Toy Fair. So, uh they had actually to, well to kind of give them a nod too uh they got more yeah. more in the works they were like four it, point of articulation just ne never meant to be opened or played with type type deals like yeah. counter style yeah 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 exactly and yeah. it's uh <laughs> it, it, the response though honestly was overwhelming because that's a property yeah. that everybody was just jonesing for it's honestly the, yeah. the the whole fact of the the blade runner thing it goes to show you that uh, i feel like yeah. just one little aspect of yeah. that being shown either mm -hmm. in a, a certain scale certain price point yeah. there's, there's fans that are that are ready to throw money at things yeah right so yeah i have a my lcs uh post cities comics um in portland maine uh he has a basement full of toys and bits and pieces of things you know that he's waiting for someone to come in with an incomplete something. And then he has the pieces, you know, that whole thing. Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I had no idea. I, mean, I know about this world now, but at one point I didn't. So I brought him over to look at a box of my brother-in-law's toys and like half this shit I didn't recognize. <laughs> and he sits down and he's just, like with a big heavy sigh. He's like, I do know what most of this stuff is. Like, I hate that I have to know. Like, I know that that comb uh, is meant for a My Little Pony, and it's actually worth sixty dollars because everyone loses that comb. Right. And I hate that I have this information. I was like, whoa! So I was really entranced by it. Um, and the other big item we had, big item, it was a uh, Pirates of Dark Water action figure. Oh, but it yeah. was um one of like the weapons that everyone lost. Like the plastic thing usually breaks, and this one was complete, and it sold for like forty bucks. It was crazy. And then the rest of it was worth nothing. Yeah, right. That's always the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, in in talking about that, um, I've been kind of putting back together my Batman the Animated Series collection from Kenner. And mm -hmm. oddly enough, I do have most of the old parts and pieces. Uh, I did play with yeah. those things into the ground. But of course, yeah. uh, to complete the main Batman, which was the combat belt Batman, I'm going mm -hmm. through my stuff. I'm like, okay, I've got the handcuffs. I've got the little black piece and the launcher. Yeah. I don't have the belt. Oh, the belt's like, 25 bucks just for like the most rinky yeah. dink little yellow right. belt did i buy it yes but you know yeah i'm not happy about it <laughs> no no never never yeah. happy about piece of, it's it's always the most expensive piece that you're missing from yeah uh, your childhood and, and and whatnot and speaking of toys uh i have to bring this up a while ago when you were kind of prepping for um the, doing the whole batman beyond the white knight mm -hmm. You made this really cool Batmobile out of yeah. um, something like cardboard paper, whatever you had lying around, and it looked. I amazing. wish I. It's in my office right now. I wish I had it with me. Oh no, oh. it's all. It's all. I mean, I've, I've studied. I'm like that is to go from you know the initial Batman Beyond cartoon and then to see your yeah. design again, like how you're kind of describing what you're doing with Zorro. It's a nice uh, interpretation of mm -hmm. that. And then, um, you know, I've been bugging McFarlane toys for a while saying, when are you going to do more uh, yeah. White Knight, do the Batman, you know, White Knight and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully one day they do the the Batmobile because they're making Batmobile I, and right, you know. Yeah. So I um, I wrote to um, one of Todd's employees last like eight months ago. Sure. And I said, uh, listen, I don't know. I know that they don't have any contact with the artist and sometimes they don't even care what, what what I have to say, which is, which is fine. Yeah, same uh, boat, I said, same boat, yeah. <laughs> said, you know, you know, if you're going to do the figure, I think you should do Bruce Wayne in a trench coat. So I, I designed Bruce where he's like refusing to acknowledge that he's Batman, but he puts on some stuff just because he needs protection. And like, he basically looks like Batman, even though he's not wearing a mask. Right. Yeah. So you're going to have that one, but then you have two other heads. You have his head with the cow on it, with the beard coming out. And then at one point in the story, Joker takes over his body. Mm -hmm. Joker's a hologram in his head, and Joker like hijacks him. So Joker is dressed. So you could have a Joker head that goes on top. So you get three figures for the price of one. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, then I was bugging them about um something else. Bugging. I, I I kept it very succinct and clean, and I'm like, they're not gonna care what I have to say. And sure enough, they never wrote me back. So I don't know if uh, I got the message. 
Okay. Well, hopefully, <laughs> I think McFarland Toys watches this channel. So they'll come on. You gotta, you gotta get the the Batmobile going, and then people can. Yeah. Oh, that way they can see the interest. We'll do it Blade yeah. Runner style. If you like Blade Runner, right? Yeah, let's talk about that, and then yeah. Uh, no, that my night. my Batmobile they used for at least three different toys. Um. I think the way I designed it so that my battlefield has like two giant like skegs in the front with oh. wheels. And in between that, it looks like a bed and in the middle of the bed is a giant engine and Batman sitting at the back. So something about that design lent itself to toys very well. So they were able to do like standing robots for $80, um, <laughs> a couple other things here and there. And they've tweaked a few things, but it's clearly my design. Oh, yeah. um, and I always love seeing that, but I almost wish like, can they just call me? They don't have to pay me. Just let me give a few notes. Cause if they just like tweak this and move that in, it would look a lot better, you know? It, you're, and, and you're the car guy. They should be. I true. know. <laughs> I, I would, I would expect just saying that they would consult with you, the creator yeah. of said uh, battle, yeah. Bill. even a little bit, just call you up. Yeah. Hey, you wanna... yeah. You want to, uh, you know, have any input on this because I yeah, know. You're spin master and yeah, you're right. Yeah. It, it, when I did a video on it a while ago, it was, I'm like, this is Sean's, but it's, this yeah. is off and this is, you know, this should yeah. be here and not yeah. that I think about cars, yeah, general, it, but yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's good. It's boxy. They did a 70% job, but it should be sleek and slick and it just doesn't quite have that. I've seen some renders, the 3d renders of, uh, fan art online there's some really nice ones out there i'm like oh can i just send that to get 3d printed and pay someone to paint it like i just want one i don't care if anyone else gets one. <laughs> i see some 3d modelers out there and 3d printing and i think they look great but i always wanted to tweak like one or two things that would make the whole difference um i think one of the tricks of car design is making it look good from every angle and it's yeah. hard like and even you think of your favorite sports car you're thinking of like the rear looks good but the front's just eh, or the front's awesome the, you know, like the '80s Lamborghini. It's all about the rear end and the, right. the door ends, You know, um, when I was designing the White Knight um, flying Batmobile, sorry, the uh, Beyond Batmobile, mm -hmm. I, I, and the cartoon, it like changes shape depending on who was animating it. It yeah. looks like two, two commas like stuck together. It was sort of um, <laughs> morphous in a way, which is cool for that. But I'm like, I I, I really want to take a pass at this thing and try to reinterpret it in a way that's more ground. Yeah. It's more like Blade Runner, he still looks like it, like the cartoon, you know. Yeah, and it was really fun to figure out like how big to make the triangle forks at the beginning, and how to make the rear end, how to you know the the red uh, cockpit, how big that should be. Um, and I think what was interesting was speaking. I hate to go back to Blade Runner again, but if yeah. you look at the uh, White Knight Batmobile with the skegs that we're talking about, with the two forks that stick out it almost evolves into the same shape because the beyond, beyond one has the same thing. Um, it's very spinner car looking, which I think is what the original designers were looking for back in the nineties anyway. So yeah, I think the evolution of the two cars worked out really well. There's plenty of things I wish I could go back and fix about my book, but I am pretty proud of the, uh, the, the vehicle design. Sure. No, I, and, and what I like about your artwork is that, um, it has is very angular, but it's it's very different, and it you, you have your style that's unique, all your own, um, which is refreshing because I have seen people that tackle uh, offshoots of your comic, and not to say that it did, the story is there, and of course the art is there, but your art style is so very distinct, and it oddly enough lends itself very well to uh, action figures, and to go back to what McFarland did. Yeah, uh, well, thanks. That man. is such a standout wave, including even uh, mm -hmm. when they did Curse of the White Knight, they did Azrael's um, sort of 90s suit, but you did it all in black. Yeah. Um, yeah. The they killed of, that figure. Yeah. yeah the, it's funny. The amount of people in, in talking about repaints before we got started, the amount of people that talk about how they would love to see that in mm -hmm. like a blue, you know, and I was yeah. like, yeah, that, that would probably look really cool, literally sleek, you know? So, yeah. It was blue in the comic. I don't know why the figure was black, or it's yeah. in such a dark blue. It just looks black. Oh. It's. I've seen a few repaints. It's a popular one. People repaint matte yeah. blue, and it, they pop it out really well. You had the you had the single release. They they did a a very silverized variant of it. Yeah, they did. Uh, which. <laughs> 
you know. Yeah. <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's fine. <laughs> but, and then you had the Batman. He had a, it was a two pack too with the fire um, little accessory. And then you had the swords mm. in the back, which I, I, I like that one as well. Your Jack Napier Joker, like mm. you were talking about with multiple heads. Um, yeah. I, I, was, I also suggest because Jack's a hologram, I told them um, they did a figure of him from beyond. They could make him translucent at the base. So yeah. he sort of like gets more solid as you go up the body. Sure. I know there's a whole like collectorship who love translucent figures. Yeah. It's oddly enough, uh, Hasbro did uh, some of the hologram figures today. They unveiled those. So it's like little puck disc thing and it lights up. Yeah. It looks like each of the characters, like you're holding it in the movies and Oh, cool. It's a good way to do a, a repaint. I'll give it. I'll give them that. I, I'm not yeah. too sold on Star Wars in recent <laughs> months, years. But hey, that's years, kind of decades. Thinking, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the um, yeah, no, with the with White Knight, it's all about like, I mean, even in your your wide shot where you have all the, the heroic pose walking and that's the perfect shot to use to make a translucent from the legs up kind of uh yeah, Jack, Jack Napier, Joker. We're just giving them yeah. ideas at this point. I, I hope for they're free. I know. Yeah, I, I mean, know. I wrote them. They ignored me. Yeah. <laughs> Why would they listen to us now? They're not even. Nobody's watching. It's it's. I fine. think the, <laughs> the Blade Runner people are gonna murder us in our sleep, <laughs> right? Or there's some Blade Runner company out there that's gonna send this video over there and be like, "See, the, yeah, on Gordon Murphy Sean, wants. Let's have Sean do it. Exactly. How about yeah. a Blade Runner comic? You know, while we're at it, just do the whole uh, whole show. Oh man, yeah. Know? That's one of the licenses I think about getting after Zorro is seeing where Blade Runner is or I don't want I'll tell you once we stop recording because I don't want to give my ideas away. But, sure. Uh, yeah, right. You I have my eye on and I'm excited about <laughs> um, some of the licenses, I think, fall flat. So my friend is really into wrestling. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time there's a wrestling comic, he's really excited. But wrestling people aren't Wednesday Warriors. There's a little bit of overlap on the Venn diagram, but not much. Mm -hmm. But what I t started realizing was if you did a Kickstarter campaign of a wrestling book and sold like wrestling products, like a wrestling belt comes with it or a keychain or, you know, you, you make it nice. I feel like that's more likely to do a lot better as like a wrestling comic than if like Boom Studios just put it on the shelf. Yeah, I think wrestling people were open, but you have to market it to them where they are and they're not necessarily in comic book shops. Right, you know, it's sort of the same thinking with with Zorro. Is like I think if you will, you can awaken desire for this, but if you're just going to slap it on a shelf put out by whoever, it's just not going to get attention. So there's a yeah. lot of like '80s franchises that I think could be reinvented if you did it the right way. Um, and I know like franchise revival is like a bad phrase these days, but I'm I'm always happy when someone does a good job with it. So there's a few that I have my eyes on. It, it's funny you say that because. In terms of uh, the modern age and with what the internet and social media has become, it seems to me a lot of companies think we're going to just, we're going to bring this back and everyone's going to be excited and we have to do the bare minimum and it'll yeah. just kind of market itself. <laughs> and more often yeah. than not, they learn the hard way because, you know, it's, it's sometimes a lot of people yeah. have aged out or forgotten or yeah long gone it's not something that's on everybody's radar they think oh everyone's gonna remember this it's gonna be great yeah they need to like your friends who ran the prisoner i think it needs you need to have a fan in the meetings with yeah. you you need to have someone who's like your stand-in customer who can tell you i like that i don't like that that's too expensive i'll pay yeah. more for this they don't i don't know why they aren't good at finding yeah i know what you're saying yeah that's it, i think that's maybe why i, I did well with the the Zorro people, um, CPI. They're called Zorro Productions Inc. Uh -huh. I think they could sense I'm, I'm clearly a fan. I'm trying to put the character in a new light. I'm going to protect them. I'm going to protect Zorro. Yeah. I'm doing some work with uh, Harley Davidson right now too, and he can tell. Like I understand Harley's brand, and you know, so I'm trying to convey to people that they pick the right person to work on it to avoid no, I, the problem that you're talking about. Yeah, I I totally understand that. I think that and you know the the public. Um, and audiences are not stupid they know if mm -hmm. you're being disingenuous they know if you don't know the brand uh in general yeah. so you know even talking about for me yeah. liking the mask of zorro it's like i like yeah. this version i know about this but if i really if you really want to hear me talk about zorro it's yeah. the antonio banderas movie because of yeah. how awesome i thought that movie like they did such a good job mm -hmm. and it's a very 
cool story again kind of in a way batman beyond ish with the the oh. old train and the new zorro and, yeah that's and fair whatnot. yeah so it's funny how a lot of this stuff all kind of uh, congeals <laughs> and has roots within itself, within itself. Yeah. Man. So, yeah. Inception. We, <laughs> we were trying to build a campaign and think about the different tiers to give people. And there's the traditional ones like you can get the set of four cop of the comics or you can get the trade or the hardcover. Sure. And then we were like, well, let's do like an 11 by 17. So it's the size of the actual art that I, I draw. And then we had this idea to do a masterclass edition, which is... Uh, there's an extra hundred pages in the back that's just me talking about how to lead the eye, good ways of design, even tips on surviving in the industry, things to avoid. Yeah, like anything I have is sort of like a college course. I want to throw into this. Um, it's going to cool. be $200, which is a lot. But for college textbook, it's actually pretty cheap. Right. Um, yeah, especially in this day and age. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, then we have like a couple of Skype chats um, you can buy, or we're going to have a Zorro event in Dallas next year. Um, oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. If you're there, let me know. I'll get you in. <laughs> oh, yeah. that You know what? I, I, I have been telling everyone that this was my third time to New York this year, and yeah. it's been quite the year. You know, I, I'm very thankful. I've been traveling every which way for at least what I do with Toy Shiz, and it's yeah. been amazing just to meet people and talk with people and just kind of shoot the breeze about toys and pop culture and you know yeah. even getting to sit here and talk with you i mean i just i literally just uh i did a live stream with todd mcfarlane at mm -hmm. toy fair and he took me around the booth and he's like oh let's look at this detail and you know look at this and <laughs> he's so funny todd everyone does a great impression of him yeah <laughs> it's so easy to do <laughs> He's, I mean, he's awesome to talk with and he's, he's just a lot of yeah. fun. He's very passionate. And again, talking about mm -hmm. having passion, uh, you never question whether he knows his stuff or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, yeah. yeah, he's, he, he's like the new Stan Lee in a way, you know, yeah. I mean? very much yeah, for like, sure. like that. Did you ask him, did you nudge him about more white knight figures or you... I, I didn't talk to him <laughs> about it, but I definitely <laughs> told the, uh, uh, the McFarlane people chances yeah. are Hopefully you're good. The designs again just lend themselves so well to action yeah. figures. So that um that Azrael is also kit bashed a lot. I see people ripping that figure up and repurposing the shoulder blades and all kinds of things. It's, yeah, uh, it, really interesting. Like what you were talking about with what fans do and 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 it's largely I hate to call it like fan creations anymore because yeah. it's gotten it to that point where it looks sometimes better than what is put out into yeah. like, toy shelves and what people have done. I'm a huge Spider-Man, the animated series fan and mm, what nice. people have done with that series and action figure accessories and the things that I've seen. I mean, yeah. you cannot top that. So yeah, it's yeah. to the action figure cobblization and customization mm -hmm. and put yeah. it all together. It's become a whole new animal. Whereas when I used to read toy fair magazine, mm -hmm they would have like top five customs and you'd look at it and you know, those are all five yeah. POA and we're mixing and yeah. matching with that. But what it's become now is insane. Yeah. So, I remember when I was a kid, I bought wizard magazine yeah. number uh, issue nine and I think it covered toy fair. And it was when the X-Men figures were announced. And uh, yeah. I remember seeing a picture of the Deadpool figure and I never had no idea who Deadpool was in like, 1991 mm -hmm. uh and i'm like because i love snake eyes from gi joe and this was like a hot orange snake eyes i'm like <laughs> yeah um and uh, i immediately bought everything i could about deadpool um, this is before he was reinvented and became a funny character yeah like, i like deadpool before it was cool everybody <laughs> I, I i agree with you on that i do like ryan reynolds's take on that i know that's bled into the comic and they had him in mind when they kind of reinvented him but yeah old school deadpool like and even in his various cameos on X Men the animated series, that's the style of Deadpool that I enjoy. You know, and he was yeah. kind of just a a, a dick. You know? <laughs> but yeah, but not yeah. He's the a bad funny... guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's not a redeemable good guy. He's no. just a bad guy. But yeah, and they drew him angry um, when they moved on to drawing him with like a sock, uh, well, uh, whatever. Mask yeah, the that little he's wearing. Cool yeah 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 and animating the eyes it's like yeah that's cool I, I i'm glad this is selling but that's not my deadpool my deadpool looks like angry orange snake eyes yeah and a lot more buff too and he had like yeah. 
He had a lot more pouches, you know, around. You know, he had the whole life. Oh, yeah, man. And, yeah. It's funny. When I was designing the Asriel uh, costume, I was reinterpreting the one from the 90s by uh, Mike Manley. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I showed it to my friend who was helping. He always helps guide me on the Batman stuff I do. And he's got a good barometer for what works. But I didn't put the pouches on the leg at all. <laughs> um, and uh, he's like, dude, you got to add the pouches. I'm like, why? It's so 90s. Like, what the hell? He's got a robo- flying Robocop suit. Like, what the uh-huh. hell does he need leather pouches for? He's like, dude, just kiss me. Put the pouches on. And I did. And I'm glad I did because I think he was right. And um, yeah. you're welcome, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can thank my friend Clay. For giving you like, pouches what does he put in there it, it doesn't matter sandwiches you know it could sandwiches. be sandwiches yep. on the on the route to over yeah. bruce and god you know it doesn't matter it's it's whatever but yeah yeah isn't that funny the way that that works like the pouches of all things is what is would dry your eye and if you didn't have the pouches they'd be like where's the pouches i don't understand you know? you're right yeah i mean i think you're <laughs> you can reinterpret that i mean there aren't a lot of as real fans out there but the ones that there are are very well fortunate um and as long i think they were happy with the redesign because it generally stayed with the same shape i got yeah. rid of the big goofy pointy uh like they point straight up shoulder pads which don't make any sense but i still gave him the equivalent of something more modern so i think people were happy but i think it's a dumb feature like the pouches that makes it makes the whole thing <laughs> i hate to say that yeah it, it and there's and that's the aesthetics of the 90s with dc comics right it's pouches yeah. bullets uh yeah wild muscles that make no sense and yeah. it, it it's a time that i especially gravitate and hearken to mm-hmm. jim balance catwoman thing that is sleek and sexy about yeah. that just comics these days it's very pick and choosy with me you know with art mm-hmm. styles that's why i said like yours stands yeah. out to me um you bring in a lot of nostalgia but then you reinterpret it and you bring uh just a different unique taste to it and for that yeah. i appreciate it so Thanks, man uh, uh i told you that i what i wanted for my dream toy that they haven't put out with my blade runner what yeah. is your holy grail i've been collecting now for over 30 years and i think about it even walking around toy fair and mm-hmm. being like what do i want um if it came to an action figure i don't think that the real ghostbusters have ever had that that core um mm-hmm action figure line and i have bugged everyone and anything uh uh, to make them right as much as like technology has evolved and you know the artist's Mm -hmm. eye and really capturing yeah toys are amazing that's just it's never had those the ghosts busters like that really core so yeah be a mix of like cartoony but real and gritty but fun and poetic almost like uh, when they redid he-man few of those lines really nailed it the spirit right. of it you know so maybe that's yeah that would be pretty cool with the, the cartoon right but yeah. the real ghostbusters the coolest thing though i will say that i saw at toy fair i mean i love action figures obviously and love talking about pop culture in general but i kid you not it's something that and i even joked about them um spin master has mm-hmm. a it's part of their air hogs line it's like the hovercraft and all that kind of stuff yeah it's car and i swear to god it's it's somehow it t- i'm sure it's magic i don't know i don't know the mechanics of how this works it <laughs> sticks to the wall and you rc remote control and it drives on the wall and you can go yeah. on playing and and wow. i told i go i go you know what you have to do you have to license this with batman forever yeah drives up the the side i mean you got to get that val kilmer batmobile going and he's like yeah maybe we yeah. will like no you have to you have to do yeah that. <laughs> they need you. Has anybody hired you to be consultant or anything like that? Uh, I, like I have been really good at it. I think. Thank you. I have been um, lucky. This has opened up a lot of uh, fun avenues. I will say. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. But um, I love doing this, and I love speaking with you. I know that we have to keep it short, but let's wrap this up. In so October fifth, you are launching your new Zorro Kickstarter. I am. It'll be at noon Eastern. Uh, we'll have lots of goodies, um, collectible covers, crazy variants. Um, when you, if you're not familiar with Kickstarter, you uh, get to, for a whole month, the campaign will be running and you can play around with the dials and select something. Maybe the next day you change your mind and your order isn't locked in until the end. That's when you're, uh, when the money is taken from your account. Uh, and we don't, I'm more than halfway through the book now, so there won't be any delays. We're looking to get people their stuff by um, June next year, I think. Oh, not bad. Um, 
Yeah, but if you're not into that and you want to just support your LCS, um, you can just wait for it to come out in, on stores. And I think issue one might be hitting in like January or February, but it won't be the special covers that we're selling through Kickstarter. Very Sorry cool. About that. Right. Um, and there is an option for stores to actually buy stuff through Kickstarter and they can do bargain. Oh. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm curious to see how this all goes. It's kind of like a hybrid system, putting out a comic where it's like, it's basically an image comics model, but we're using crowdfunding to get the funding to, to start everything. Sure. And by getting the money up front, we're able to put in, buy these expensive items for collectors that um, other publishers, they don't, they're not wired that way. Right. So that's kind of the, the, the proof of concept that I'm working with with Zora right now. Excellent. And that's a really boring way to end the uh, podcast. I'm sorry. No, not at all. No. <laughs> we'll, we'll, I'll have uh, links down in the description below. So again, thank you. Tomorrow, October 5th, nice and Halloween-y, right? You get yourself right. Right the Halloween season proper with some exactly. comic books. And uh, we got some Zorro action coming. So I wish you all the absolute best. I hope that, and I, I mean, come on. Appreciate it. Of course. Well, I like doing this uh, stuff and reaching out and to going where people are, especially podcasts like yours. Or not necessarily everyone is a Wednesday warrior. I think it's uh, really fun to talk about this stuff. Well, thank you. Yeah, and I appreciate you talking about. I'm sure there's a lot of McFarland fans out there will appreciate this and hearing your take on your action figures, which is all kind of incredible to me. So <laughs> more uh, pouches. I hear you, everybody. Yeah, more pouches. I don't, unless you, <laughs> unless Zoro has pouches, I probably won't read it. So no. <laughs> he's got a yeah, he's got a few, but I could okay. have added more. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's just, for no reason, one around the neck. Yeah around the shoes yep. shredded 90s Zorro. yeah <laughs> one around Perfect. the sword you know whatever <laughs> <laughs> sword pouch <laughs> or better yet he can uh, somehow pull the sword out of the pouch right it makes yeah. no sense but it makes sense it works so. <laughs> absolutely man well cool thank you so much i very much appreciate it and uh, i will talk with you soon good stuff thanks